We can begin to achieve socialism in our lifetime. Thank you very much. Tony Benn came closer than anyone in Labour's modern history to getting the party to reject capitalism altogether Comrades, and pursue want... socialism in one country. We've tried to make capitalism work with good and humane Labour governments and we haven't succeeded because it can't work, because it rests on injustice. It was 1981. Some Labour MPs were already preparing to defect from Michael Foote's Labour to form the short-lived Social Democratic Party. Many more would have left, changing the party forever if Tony Benn had beaten the right-wing former Chancellor Dennis Healy in the contest for the deputy leadership. Dennis Healy won by the tiniest of margins. Tony Benn, 49.574. Dennis Healy, 50.426. It would be nearly 30 years before Labour elected a leader Tony Benn voted for. He'd known both brothers since they were boys. David, I associate very much with the Tony Blair and the new Labour. Edward, not quite so much. Indeed, not at all. And uh, so I see them as representing a division uh, uh, in the party. Tony Benn struggled to escape not poverty, but privilege. He was the son of a Labour hereditary peer. He became a Viscount when his father died in 1960 and had to fight to change the law so he could shed the title and return to the House of Commons. You see, the first Jew had to fight to get in, the first Catholic had to fight to get in, the first atheist had to fight to get in, and I've no doubt we shall create a precedent. Anthony Wedgwood Bend was a passionate supporter of Harold Wilson and in the forefront of his attempt to brand Labour the party for the modern age. It's got an advantage which many people have uh, urged in the past. You can pick it up easily. In the 1970s, his politics moved to the left and he became plain well, Tony Benn. When Margaret Thatcher threw Labour into Labour opposition in the 1979 the general election, election he was fully reborn as a tribune of the left. He said Labour lost elections because policies like nationalisation, nuclear disarmament and withdrawal from Europe were forever being dropped from the manifesto. I have been responsible now for five years to see the policies develop in the subcommittees, come to the executive, go to the unions for consultation, be discussed in the liaison committee with the unions, come to conference, be endorsed. And then I have seen them cast aside in secret by those who are not accountable to this movement. Michael Foote's 1983 manifesto was the closest Labour got to his beliefs. Tony Byrne is out of the House of Commons. But the party crashed at the election. He lost his seat and Labour began a journey back in the other direction. When Tony Blair was in power, he was a fixture of street protests, marching four jobs against the Iraq war, even visiting Baghdad. The first question is, does Iraq possess weapons of mass destruction? Iraq has no weapons of mass destruction whatsoever. In one of his last public appearances, he opposed military action against Syria. And I've been on this platform over many years, from the time of Suez onwards, over 50 years, and usually we found that we have lost the battle. He published eight volumes of diaries, his basement for years a fire hazard of squirreled archive. Um, I got that idea, she is a pilot. You sat there and you had things on all three sides and on the ceiling. So if you suddenly want to find out the date, it's easier to look there than find something else. In old age, he toured the country, pulling in the sort of audiences that might once have demonised him, but who now hungered for a politics untouched by focus groups. I was once the most dangerous man in Britain, and now I'm uh, described as a national treasure. So we're coming down now to the sewage ejector plant. Tony Benn mocked Parliament's pretensions in a TV documentary. This is what, how old then? Um, about 1887. That would have taken Mr Gladstone's uh, excavator out of the building. Uh, just it? about, I would think, yes. He regularly took his political message to the Glastonbury Festival. Nowhere was out of bounds and nothing dimmed his faith that his ideas would have their day. A few years ago, he recorded this message for his own obituary. As by definition, I won't be able to say this again. Can I take this opportunity of thanking my family, my mother and father and my two brothers, 
and above all Caroline, who inspired me over the 50 years of our marriage, and my children and grandchildren, and all the many, many other people who supported me, encouraged me, and taught me so much. And I hope that in return I encouraged them, and that I didn't give offence, because I tried to speak my mind, and that's what you have to do in politics. So thank you very much. And I'll check that on transmission. <laughs> <laughs>